Hi there, folks, and welcome to TV Tuners, a podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson, and with me, as always, is my co-host and 200-year-old vampire, Stairmaster. That's not true. Let me out of this cage. Uh, sorry, buddy. You gotta stay in there for our protection and your uh, <sighs> interest, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what? What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, and with us, as always, is our other co-host and... Uh, well-adjusted child, despite all of the tragedy that has befaced them, Kioran. Hello, I'm very well-adjusted and mentally healthy. This entire family died. Yeah, I don't care. That's oh, good. So but you won't still mind if got I got plenty of attitude. You won't mind if I kidnap you then. I'll be upset for like ten minutes, <laughs> and then immediately bond. Yeah, you, you're my new dad. <laughs> ah, sweet. All right, welcome to another edition of TV Tuners. We're back at it! After a stunning seven days of silence. Yeah, who could have guessed that we would be back the next week to record yet another episode? We received a lot of uh, requests for comment, but we held back until today. We've been very careful. Yeah, we've, uh, we've never talked about anything that was going on prior to this moment right here. Anyway, uh, what you guys watch this week? I watched some more Game of Thrones. I'm almost caught up. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, did, four episodes from being caught up. Did you like the Dorn adventures? Or not the Gambit? Yeah. I like how much poison they use. The filler <laughs> arc of Game of Thrones? What about that moment where, that, where uh, Pedro Pascal gets his head squashed? I was like... Ugh! Yeah, that so was like he. <laughs> and what about the, when... The psychic energy from his death just killed me in real life. Wow. That's powerful. Rip to a real one. <laughs> what do you uh what do you think about that uh that Ramsey Bolton? He so he sure is a mean fella. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like how they did Stannis into a big jerk boy for no reason? Uh, like, they made him irredeemable, and then yeah. they just, like, killed him. Immediately. That was very unsatisfying. It yeah. was really nice of Stannis to suddenly destroy his entire family life and then himself. <laughs> and kingdom. Yeah. Well, basically. You know, in the books, it's implied that that's not going to happen at all. That uh, Melisandre is going to burn... Shireen, or whatever her name was, to resurrect Jon Snow. That's what everyone thinks is going to happen if the books ever come out. They won't I think come the, out. He'll I be think at some point we're just going to not have any books anymore. Anyway, you're clo- anyway. you're uh, you're almost finished with the the last season, the most recent the last season. season, the final. That's season. right. Kyo got the early screeners. Where are you at now? I've got right? some spoilers for you. I don't remember uh, what episodes happen when in the final season, Kieran, but where are you at? What's going on? Is Littlefinger being weird? Um, Littlefinger's like, I, I want you, Sansa. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Have Daenerys and uh, Jon Snow met up yet? Yeah, they're like, uh, uh. I don't trust you. Uh. But they're going to bang anyways. Oh my. Did they reveal that Jon Snow is a Targaryen yet? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Uh, they like heavily implied it, I think. That was like set up in book one back in 1994. Wow. They took a while in the show. Yeah, they cut out like everything in season one that alluded to it. It's Game it's... of Thrones. Who do you think is going to win? Mm, I don't know. I mean, Daenerys seems like she's got the best shot at winning right now. White Walker I'm wins. I'm rooting for Renly. I think he's dead. <laughs> yeah. But that's not like a... That's not like an impediment on this show. Well, it is if you're anyone but Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, they didn't bring Cat- Caitlyn back to life in the show? No. They did that in the I books. think, uh... 
I think Theon Greyjoy is going to win it all. <laughs> and he's going to announce that everybody has to have their uh, genitals removed. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a good ending. Maybe the dragon will be the new king. What if uh, what if Varen just wins? Or Varys? One of those Varys. two, I don't remember his Varen name. Varen is the Godzilla adjacent. <laughs> what if Varys just wins? <laughs> what That'd if Godzilla good. showed up? <laughs> And they declared him it's their new king. Do you think Godzilla? Be good. Do you think Daenerys would like be able to talk to Godzilla? I don't think Godzilla would listen to her. If that's what you're asking, I think Godzilla would comprehend everything she says and then just breathe more atomic flames <laughs> on everything. <laughs> what did you watch this week? This week's there. Oh, I saw Dragon Ball Super Broly. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of the best films I've seen in years. All right, what's the punch count on that? (laughs) I got it. Oh, this is difficult. Do you mean just like punches thrown or punches connected? You're telling Uh, me... Two separate categories. You're telling me you weren't counting the entire time? No, I was too impressed. (laughs) In fact, the fights are so fast-paced, I couldn't keep up. Okay, just I mean, give us like an, a ballpark estimate of how many punches you think were thrown. Uh, probably more than 500. Whoa. Dang, that's a good movie. <laughs> I gotta is. get in on this. It's like that's one like of the more... best an... hmm? I would say it's like in the A tier of animated films. Man, that's like more punches thrown than in a John Wick movie. <laughs> like, better than Castle of Caligastro. Worse huh. than End of Evangelion. It's worse than End of Evangelion? Oh, I would... Well, not worse, but I mean, not as good. <laughs> okay, I'm writing this down. Watch Dragon Ball Broly, Broly Adventures. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's probably going to be out of theaters by tomorrow. Now, I heard about this, Stairmaster. You can tell me if I'm wrong or right. Broly gets mm-hmm. naked. Yes, there is a shower scene. Do you see his butt? Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm watching. All right, but I'm now. assuming you don't see that dick dog. No, but you do see. It's his... Too powerful. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I want to. I want to be left to the imagination of what Broly's dick looks like. They've forsaken the old Dragon Ball tradition of showing baby dicks nonstop. Unfortunately, <laughs> our cultural tradition has been erased. Wow, well, how tragic! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, also, if anyone's did... keeping track at home, uh, show me that. Do not use the show me that dick dong <laughs> hashtag for baby dicks. Yeah, we only want grown Goku. <laughs> we only want to see that full power pole extended. <laughs> <laughs> also, they made Goku flat out into Superman now. Like, he's just sent to avoid the planet's destruction instead of being sent to wipe out Earth's population for money. So, does that make Vegeta General Zod now? Yes. Nice. That's an interesting retcon. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of people mad about it. I'm sure there's plenty of people mad that Broly isn't just a new metal CD brought to life. Yeah, so uh, the origin is different in this one. He's not just like a Limp Biscuit CD thrown in a test tube. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mean like, uh, corn. Yeah, like I mean, Limp well, Limp Biscuit is new metal too. Uh,. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Corn and Lim- So does he have a personality now, or is he just angry punch boy still? He's a sad boy with anger problems. He's very sensitive, though, when he's not in a killing rage. So he's your friend, in other yes. words. He's everyone's friend. Broly for 2020. Oh. Oh, man. What a good running mate for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> It's weird to That's think... a ticket I'd vote for in a heartbeat. Bernie... It's weird to think that. Hmm? It's weird to think that Goku's almost in his fifties. Is he really aging, though? He no, ages I... like Superman. Actually, he's only like thirty-eight or thirty-nine since the movie takes place. There's a flashback that says forty-one years ago. Also, he got his age reset during the events of Dragon Ball GT. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That hasn't happened <sighs> yet. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to see Broly fight Baby. 
Oh boy. Ultra, just imagine them just saying everything's canon. Yeah. Broly versus Baby 2020. <laughs> All right. Imagine yeah. a press release. Everything's canon. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> uh, this week I watched uh, Marvel's Runaways. The mm. second season uh, recently ended up on Hulu. It's pretty are you okay. Gonna see that? Are you going to see that a second time in theaters? Uh, it's a show, so no. <laughs> well, so what if they released every episode as a theatrical release? That they probably that wouldn't play well. They had an event of 24 where they aired every episode. And there's a challenge to stay in your seat and look at the screen the whole time. That sounds, how many people died. That. that sounds like a weird form of torture. <laughs> exactly. It's incredibly How many operative. people died? I don't know. I never followed up on it. Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm guessing like three people died Probably. and there was a lawsuit. Well, I'm sure that they like resuscitated them. <laughs> Like, it's uh, 24, so they probably got, like, a bunch of epinephrine syringes. Yeah, Runaways is okay. Oh. It's probably uh, it's weird. It's probably the most consistent Marvel show I've watched. Is Spider-Man going to show up like he did in the comic? I highly doubt. Oh. Anyway, uh, let's move on, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't have any more questions. Do you have any more questions? Yeah, are they running away? Yes, it took them a whole season to do it, but they have, in fact, run away. <laughs> finally. The title finally pays off. Yeah, it uh, it's the most Marvel TV bullshit ever, which is that, hey, let's spend the entire ten episodes first season and totally run away. Luckily, the, se- yeah. the second season is a little, uh, a little more consistent than that. That reminds me of when I was watching Daredevil, and I'm like, put on the suit! Put on the suit. Once you're gonna Put do on some stunts. <laughs> Once you're gonna jump some buses. <laughs> or like how Punisher doesn't really start killing a whole bunch of people until halfway through his series. Mm. Oh no, he kills like a ton of people in the first episode. Yeah, but he doesn't wear the suit. Or no, he doesn't right. wear the skull. He's not the Punisher, he's just a dude who kills people. He's just gunman. They make us wait. They make us wait. They they torture us. It's not like that costume's even that expensive compared to the Daredevil <laughs> suit, like production wise. It's just a body armor with the skull on it. Yeah. The most egregious is Defenders, where they made it. They purposely made it shorter than all the other ones, but took just as long to get everybody <laughs> together. Yeah, and then didn't make any of the fights interesting except for that. That that first one. <laughs> that one in the second episode. Yeah. Or whatever. No, the fourth. We had to wait till the fourth episode for them to team up. No, the second episode where Luke Cage just bursts through the walls. Yeah, that's the and, fourth. Uh, that's the fourth episode. No, that's the second. They're in the meeting. <laughs> they're in the meeting, right? Uh, yeah, that's episode two. No, that's episode four. Out of like. This is a delightful argument. <laughs> okay. I know if that you the agree with Stairmaster. Is... Tweet hashtag stairs right. If you agree with Swanson, tweet hashtag stairs wrong. Nobody wants to remember Defenders. Let's move on. All right. There's news afoot. Actually, there's only one news afoot because it's been kind of a slow week in the world of television. What's the news? All right. You guys know The Sopranos, right? Sort of. I only, I'm still on season two of my rewatch. And I haven't watched an episode in several months. Sorry. I know a Soprano. His name is Tony. Yeah. Well, everyone knows how much Tony Soprano is cool and all that. Yeah. He's my friend. He does crime. (laughs) They all love Tony Soprano. I want to know what his backstory is. Well, don't worry. You finally, you'll finally get it in the new Sopranos prequel being uh, produced currently. By whom? By uh, HBO. Oh, I meant like director. Uh, the director's name is Alan Taylor. I don't know what he's done before. Mm. Uh, so but wait, this is what everybody's like a... been waiting for. So wait, what is this going to be? Because didn't we get a bunch of flashbacks in The Soprano about Tony's youth? Yeah, it's going to be uh, set in the 60s and 70s, you know, back when Tony's oh! dad and everybody was running stuff. So it has nothing to do with the show, then. 
Not really, says, no. It's all. It, it's just a flash. It's it's pretty much just an extended movie based in the time where Tony wishes he was in. <laughs> but that's not the that's not the big news. The big news is Tony's going to be in it. Wow. <gasps> But of course, James believe- Gandolfini is one not old enough and two dead. So <laughs> what? he's definitely. I think his problem is he's too old. If he's dead, he's not young enough. Yeah. I think he's old. He's not, well. It, time is relative once you're dead. So if you die, he's, both, he's be- both not young enough and not old enough. If you die, your age becomes infinity. Yeah, they should put that on gravestones. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so they so they're gonna CGI a younger version of him and great, just great. No, no, no. Stan. Here we go. No, no, Keo Rain. They're, they're gonna do you one better. They've cast his uh-huh. son, Michael Gandolfini, to play <laughs> a young version of Tony Soprano. Uh, wow. What a funny name. Michael Gandolfini seems like a very normal name. <laughs> oh, never mind. Would it be funny? you're if... thinking of that's really funny. Is John Gandolfini? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it, would it be funnier if he named him like was his son's name Andrew in the show? Yeah, what if he named his son? No, like, it was Anthony. What if he named his son Anthony? <sighs> okay, so I'd be in favor. So, like, is there just gonna be one scene of Tony Soprano coming in and being like, "Papa, I want to do the crimes too." I mean, I guess it depends on how late it is, because, like, he was born in, like, 1959 or something, so if it's set in the 60s and 70s, he's going to be, like, a preteen, and this guy is not, uh, so, Michael Gandolfini is not a preteen. And he's not a post-teen? He is a teen. <laughs> mm. I don't know the prefix for during. I think you just say... You just say teen. Enter teen. Yeah, he's a he's current he's a current teen. <laughs> All right. Uh, looking up the director, Alan Taylor. He's directed a bunch of episodes of TV, uh, mostly for uh-huh. HBO, including The Sopranos. Uh-huh. Wow. He directed an episode of Game of Thrones called Beyond the Wall. Wow. Which is an episode Keo has not watched yet. I'm not excited. Oh man, oh man! Now you're now you're gonna be excited, Snaremaster. Guess what he directed? Die Hard, Terminator Genesis. Oh no! We're what? in for a treat now. We're uh, in for a treat. He also directed Thor: The Dark World, arguably the worst of the Marvel films. I don't even think that's arguable. Mm, I've never seen it. Yeah. It's that bad. Yeah. All right, let's leave this darkness. All right, that's pretty much all I have for the news, so let's get into some segments. Killing a return of a favorite from years gone by. Years. Decades. Decades, even. 2014. It's fact or opinion. Hit the theme, Stairmaster. Okay, for those who are unaware of what Factor Opinion is since it's been so long. Factor Opinion is the segment where I ask my two co-hosts here a question and they determine whether or not it's a fact or an opinion. Or well, you don't ask And me. whoever says the correct answer gets a point. That's mostly the loser, correct. The loser today is gonna, going to be asked one final question and if they get that one wrong, they die. Oh. When do they die? Directly after the recording of this podcast is over. Yikes! Yeah, there is a uh, contract that you've signed that uh, if we are in the middle of a recording of an episode, you cannot die. Die. Yep, unless, like, I don't know, a lightning bolt hits you or something, then we can't really stop that with a contract, I don't think. Well, I mean, you know, it's up to the forces of God and man to decide. Well, let's get a lawyer on that. All right, what's the okay. first question? Or state factor opinion. Fishing is pointless. Fact. Opinion. All right, Swanson. Why is why is that a fact? Why would you fish? You don't need to anymore. Huh? 
Look, let's let the. What if I want to have a delicious, a delicious salmon dinner? Go buy one. But the fisherman has to fish no. it to get the fish out of the water. Nope. All right. Have you ever read like any accounts of like the early explorers to North America? Like there used to be huge schools of fish that would just like obstruct their boats off of Cape Cod. Nowadays, when was the last time you saw a live fish? I've never seen a live fish. Yes, fishing has been very successful at getting rain. I'm saying we don't need the fish anymore because soon the environment will give the fish to us. Mm. Nope, nope, Swanson, I'm sorry, but uh, Steermaster gets the point on this one. That's bullshit! (laughs) What if we are the environment? That's a good point. I haven't thought of it that way. All right, next question. Factor opinion. Bubbles are bad. Opinion. Fact? Okay, what do you think bubbles are good for, Stare? No, I think they're bad. Oh, sorry. Swanson, what do you think bubbles are good for? Uh, Blowing, just playing around with. Uh, They make balloons float. Like a hot air balloon, mm. you know. Imagine, yeah, have you ever been on a hot air balloon? That's fun as shit. Imagine doing that without a use, bubble. You don't use bubbles. Yeah, you do. You just put it's a big a hot air balloon is pretty much a big bubble. It's it's a balloon. A bubble is clearly something different. A balloon and a bubble are very close together, Keo Rain. One does not come without the other. Stare, what's your read on this situation? Well, if you get a bubble in your blood, you'll die. That, that that is true. That's why you have to blow the bubble that... out of your blood. Duh. Uh, also, there's like species of fish that kill things. All right. Well, we're done talking bubbles. about fish. They make superheated bubbles that are like as hot as the surface of the sun. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, those are fish that like don't live anywhere close to where we would like be able to find them. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Stare yeah. gets the point. Bubbles are, in fact, bad. You just gotta appeal to Keo's emotions, Swanson. Fuck you. <laughs> oh. All right, fact or opinion? I can juggle fifty bowling pins at once. Fact. Let's see it right now. You're not supposed to test me. You're supposed to just fact <laughs> answer the question. I unconditionally believe you. I wasn't making a claim. I was making a statement. You're my I'm friend. asking you to verify if it's you. fact or opinion. You're my friend, so I trust you. I, I never claimed to be able to juggle 50. Fact. Okay, well, you're both wrong. I can't juggle 50 bowling pins. It's never been verified. That's an opinion. Fuck. I can't believe you're just going to pander to me like that. This is disgusting. <laughs> I wanted to see proof, to be fair. All right. Uh, Here's another one. Chlorine has no chemical function. Opinion. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Opinion. All right. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. What, are you going to step in a pool with no chlorine? Haven't sure. You, haven't you ever read about World War One? That pool is going to be dirty before you're even out of there. You're going to get all sorts of diseases, Kyorain. But it's also good at killing people. And no, that's not a that's not a chemical function. That's just that people is a chemical don't. function. People just don't like it, so they die. Chlorine keep the chlorine keeps your pool clean, Kyorain. That's a myth, Swanson. No, that's a it's myth. True. Why do you think everyone you uses clean- it? Okay, how do you clean your pool, Kyo? Dirt. Uh, expand on that. <laughs> I get the dirt out. Wait, wait. You clean your pool with dirt? No, no, no. He says he gets the dirt out of his pool. Yeah, how? <laughs> with my hands. That's so inefficient when you can just put chlorine in there. Okay. Why don't you use There's the no... 
there's no science behind behind chlorine killing anything except for people who just don't like <laughs> also, it. Also, you know, bleach is a thing, Kyo, right? And what's part and bleach is like part chlorine is part of that, so So do bullets kill people because they don't like them? No, bullets have a have a very physical effect on your body. Chlorine does not. Mm. So you're saying it's a placebo all right, so, effect. All right, all right. Here's this jug of uh-huh. chlorine right here, Kyo, right? Uh-huh. Take a sip if you don't think there's any uh, chemical and if there's not any chemicals that are gonna you know harm you or well, anything. I don't li- I don't like it. I don't Chug. like well, it. Well, this is the Chug. only this is the only way we can prove this right now. Chug, chug. Chug. All right, all right, fine. Here, I'm gonna pour a glass of it. Shots. Oh no! We can't continue the segment like this. It turns out the Quick. it turns out the real loser all along was the listeners. All right, so Stairmaster wins the segment. I don't. Okay. And that means Swanson's gonna have to have to take on the. Oof. So you have to take on the trial question. Swanson, Ooh. this question determines your fate. Your eternal fate. I'm not scared. Now keep in mind, if you kill Swanson, the podcast is over forever. I understand the implications of this. Alright, Swanson, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay. Factor opinion, pepper is sweet. Opinion. Okay. Why do you think that's an opinion? It's clearly not sweet. I've put it on lots of things. It's kind of, you, you know... You fool. You utter fool. It's kind of like salty. Salty? I mean, Why didn't you, know, you ask... It tastes, why didn't you ask him? It tastes the opposite. Sweet. Of, it tastes the opposite of sweet. He wasn't talking yeah, Stair about Mas- taste. Stairmaster has the right has the right train of thought here. I meant sweet as in like it's awesome. good, like radical. Yeah. No, it's, it's an essential part of cooking, and you're just gonna tell me it's not sweet, Swanson? Oh no! Pepper makes me sneeze, so no, it's definitely not sweet. <sighs> With a heavy heart, I must announce that Swanson will be executed oh, directly no. after. We finished recording this podcast, so hopefully he's not agitated during the rest of the recording. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, that's been Factor Opinion. Congratulations, Stairmaster. You live. Yes! I won! Alright, well, that's been a fun game. So now it's time for uh, another round of another game that is also very popular. Uh, will someone die if we lose? Yes! It's Guess Who's Coming to the Fall to the Mid-Season TV lineup! Hit the theme, Keo Rain. Bum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum. Swanson's gonna die. Bum bum. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, welcome to Guess Who's Coming to the Mid-Season TV lineup, a game that is uh, played for everyone's eternal souls. As is. That's a bit heavier than mine. As is always the case, and has always been the case. <laughs> you can look back, and it's always been the case. Yeah. I hope Swanson's unbiased. This has never been just, this has never been just a fun game that we play. <laughs> To see who's better at guessing things than the other person. It's always been a game where someone it's for is eternally damned. I feel like mad. And uh, there's no uh, any sort of repercussions that I'm, you know, bringing out because of any uh, thing that might have happened in the last segment. This is just sort of how the game is always played. And I'm uh, ready to play. Yeah, you know, we uh, we guess what's coming up into the mid-season TV lineup this this coming. Uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, so this week we are dealing with NBC, CBS, and the CW's uh, mid-season TV shows. Ooh, a triple threat. So how this works is, I will say the name of a television show coming soon, and you will guess what that show entails. And whoever is closest wins a point. All right. Wow! There are five of these, so... Remember, once again, I would like to reiterate, as is always the case, this is played for your eternal souls. Yeah, yeah, we know. All right. Enemy Within. Okay, so there's like a spy, but they don't know who the spy is. 
Okay. <laughs> There's a man, and he's he's got a he's got a split personality, and that's the enemy within, and he, and that second personality plots to destroy everything he knows and loves. What is it? All right. In this fast-paced spy hunting thriller. Eric <laughs> Shepard is a brilliant former CIA operative, now known as the most notorious traitor in American history, serving life in a supermax prison. Against every fiber of her being, but with nowhere else to turn, FBI agent Will Keaton enlists Shepard to help track down a fiercely dangerous and elusive criminal she knows all too well. So, yeah, Stair wins that one. All right. Come on. Uh, that one's coming to NBC, so get ready for that. This is another NBC show. I won't! <laughs> this is another NBC show. The Village. Oh, it's an adaptation right, so... of that M. Night Shyamalan movie, but it's stretched out to 12 episodes. Okay. So, there, there's a small town, a village, if you will, and something bad... <laughs> Something bad is happening there, and Something one man has come one village. man has to has to crack the code and figure out what's going on. <laughs> There's gonna be a code. Okay. Uh, bold choices. Uh, well, Kios is bold. I don't know. Stairs is just they're doing the thing. Uh, all right. <laughs> Welcome to the village, an apartment building in Brooklyn that appears like any other from the outside but is, in, is quite unique inside. The people who reside here have built a bonded family of friends and neighbors. Sarah's a nurse and single mom raising a creative teen. Gabe's a young law student who just got a much older and unexpected roommate. Ava must secure the future of her young U.S.-born son when ice comes knocking. Oh, dear. Uh, okay, this sounds the, more like... Um, these are this the, sounds more like the... Um, hmm? This sounds more like mine. These are the hopeful, heartwarming, and challenging stories of life that prove family is everything, even if it's the one you make with the people around you. Okay, this sounds more like the Night Shyamalan movie. No, it doesn't. Of, that sounds like a th- like on the outside it looks normal, but on the inside it's special. They've clearly like they, the- they've clearly <laughs> established that this is not some sort of like weird attraction with monsters and shit. I don't think there was an attraction. I think they were just dumb medieval people. No, the very end of the... Isn't the very end of the village, the twist ending, that they're in, like, a attraction of some sort or something? No, I think they just... I think they just wander out onto the street and get ran over by cars. Oh, yeah, it's something very <laughs> stupid. Anyway, <laughs> th- these people are clearly not, like, Menon- Mennonites. Mm. Uh, I mean, like, not literally, but maybe metaphorically. I'm going to have to give it to Keo because he was sort of correct. Is that what you want? Yeah. Is that what your bench desires? <laughs> I am uh, showcasing here that I am unbiased in my uh, rule making here and uh, clearly he's, don't. He's not going to be unbiased when it matters. And I clearly okay. don't care, uh, you know, whose soul is eternally damned. All right. What's the next show? All right. We've moved on from NBC, and we're heading to CBS, a.k.a. The Good Stuff. Uh, this one is called yes. FAM. F-A-F-A-M. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so a hip, young, connected Black. social media wizard. <laughs> uh, has, has a strong network of connected te- teens <laughs> who he refers to as his fam. I think and it's about he's a gonna, black family. Perhaps. His, possibly he's going to take on some kind of important venture. I think it's about a black family, perhaps possibly starring Cedric the Entertainer. He's already in a <laughs> show on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> you can have two. Okay, Eric Andre. All right. <laughs> that it yeah all right well like there's a hip team <laughs> hmm okay a hip team <laughs> clem's upbringing in teen years left a lot to be desired but she pulled herself up and built a fantastic life 
Great job, terrific apartment, and an amazing fiancé, Nick, a college professor from a (laughs) well-to-do, normal family. Nick's warm and supportive parents, Rose and Walt, embrace Clem and complete the family she's always wanted. But when Clem's wild child half-sister Shannon appears on their doorstep to escape their train wreck of a dad, Nick agrees that Clem can help her avoid all the mistakes she made, and they invite her to move in. So, Are they black? Uh, mixed. Hmm. Uh-oh. How will you resolve this one? Hmm. What was Keo's again? A tech wizard? A hippie young, a hippie young social media <laughs> wizard. All right, I think I have to give it to Stairmaster, because he did sort of get part of it, right? <laughs> Family. The fact that there's a family. Oh, I thought you were going to say black. Well, you got that half right, too. <laughs> One and a half. All right, so that's a point for Stairmaster. Hmm. It's looking a little rough for Keo Rain. Uh-oh. That's fine. There's two more to go. I'm sure Keo will bounce back. You just have to get this one right. All right. Or you die. This one is called The World's Best. Uh oh. Okay, so these guys are training for the Olympics, but they also have interpersonal conflicts. Oh my god, that's really good. Uh, so there, there's this guy. He's got the world's best sandwich. Jared Fogel. It's a bio. <laughs> it's a biopic drama. <laughs> and he, he's trying to figure out how to make them. Make it make his fortune off of it, but it's surprisingly challenging. Then he realizes he can make a lot of money off the, the weight losing craze. So he teams up with Subway. Why are you helping Keo, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with the art. All right. I want to see he's adding, he's adding more details to it that can make it less accurate, though. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a weird. This is weird. Uh, I mean, this is. Yeah. I mean, okay. The world's best. Based on the story of Jared Fogel, the... What? I'm kidding, of course. That's not it at all, you dumb dumbs. <laughs> Why did I believe that? <laughs> I had no... Oh, God. I'm so broken inside. A first-of-its-kind global talent competition that features acts from every genre imaginable, from every corner of the planet. They not only have to impress American judges, but they will also need to break through the wall of the world, featuring <laughs> featuring 50 of the world's most accomplished experts from every field of entertainment. This is the world's best. So that's sort of like the Olympics. So, uh, yeah, I think I have to give this one to Stairmaster. So, I mean, yeah, we, I have, we have one left, but Keorain is pretty much already going to lose. So, you know, uh, just take a moment to think about your eternal damnation and uh, think about what this show could mean. Roswell, New Mexico. All right, there's aliens. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Mm. Okay, but I think it's going to be like the color of loves type stuff. So it's going to be a sexy alien. (laughs) <laughs> and it'll be a wheelbarrow, a won't they situation. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> the predictions are as follows. Alien. Sexy alien. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Roswell, New Mexico. Let's see what this one says. Reluctant- That's probably a sitcom. <laughs> Reluctantly returning to her tourist trap hometown of Roswell, New Mexico... Liz Orteco, a jaded biomedical researcher and the daughter of an un- of done un- and the daughter of undocumented immigrants, is haunted by a tragic incident. She discovers a shocking truth about her teenage crush, who is now a police officer. Oh my God! Oh. He's an alien who has kept his unearthly abilities hidden his entire life. She protects his secret as the two reconnect and begin to investigate his origins. He's gonna be sexy. He's, it's oh a CW God. show. He is definitely sexy. 
Oh, if he had mentioned that, I probably wouldn't have said sexy alien, just because it would be too obvious. Keo, uh, I'm, uh, I hate to inform this, but you've been trounced by Stairmaster. Like, he guessed sexy think, alien, and that is the is case. This is such a joyous occasion. I think we should pardon Kia to celebrate it. The only way it could have been better is if that show was about Jared Pogle. <laughs> that would have broken me. I wouldn't have been able to continue. Same. So, uh, yeah, Keo, it looks like um, you've been... No, let him be. Let him go. It looks like you've been uh, sentenced to a... T- I'm taking you with me. Don't worry, to buddy. To eternal what? damnation. Oh, no, There's the gonna soul be alone. Re- He's going to be alone recording the stair cast. Oh. I thought you were talking about me. Okay, that's fine. Have fun, Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a fun what a fun round of games we had here. <laughs> we're good friends. We all love each other. All right. And we're going to record this podcast amicably, knowing that both of us are dead afterwards. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the show. This week we watched a uh, new show from Fox called The Passage. <laughs> uh, let's get into you it, know. I guess. That was a very slow passage of time when I was watching it. Yeah, this show um, this, is interesting, I guess. This is based... It's a real it's a, it's a real doozy, I have I to say. I wouldn't say it's baffling, but I would say it's mysterious. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, this show is based off of a... Loosely, I should say. Loosely based off of a trilogy of uh, books. Uh, and the first of which is called The Passage. So I guess that's where they got the name from. Because I can't see in this show where they got the name The Passage otherwise. I assume this is like a young adult thing, since there's a kid. Uh, yeah, I think. Hmm. I didn't look up a whole lot about it in and of itself, but yeah. Yeah, let's not. Who cares? Yeah, the, the first 20 minutes of this show had me wondering if I was supposed to be laughing at it because... The dialogue for it is just unbelievable. Yeah, well, first off, uh, the show does a very, you know, smart, elegant sort of way of entering you into the world by having uh, not only narration, but narration that is also exposition. (laughs) Well, yes. The first ten minutes of this show, or maybe five, the first, it felt like ten, the first ten minutes of this show uh, are the girl narrating to us events that one she should not know and two that are pretty much the reason that all of this ends up happening basically everything that should have been in the pilot is done in the first 10 minutes yeah you probably could have well i don't know if i want to spend an entire episode on this stuff (laughs) yeah uh So yeah, we get the she she narrates us to the story of these two scientist brothers or whatever. <laughs> scientist brothers. They're they're not actual brothers, but they're like bond they're, they're bonded. <laughs> they're best friends. They've got some kind of I don't remember what it was thing that you give to somebody and it's supposed to make them immune to all disease. Uh, yeah, they're they're searching for someone who like got some sort of dis- like some sort of thing that cures all of disease because okay, so they're lo- what they're they're part of a government program which is like trying to cure all disease, I guess. Fair enough. Which is the type of placeholder that a writer puts in when they don't know what the person actually wants to cure yet. Oh, just all disease. No more sick people. They just want to get rid of all sick. <laughs> Yeah, all infectious disease, no more, gone. So, um, then, th- so yeah, they, we, yeah, we find these guys in the quote-unquote Bolivian highlands, which is just some forest in Canada. Yeah, and uh, they get taken to a like a cave where there's an old man in a ca- in a cage, and it turns out <laughs> he's a vampire. Oh, there's th- For sure. there's done be vampires in this shit. 
And they, they have a guy, like, jokingly say, we're very careful not to call him a vampire. Yeah, because uh, they're doing, like, the Walking Dead thing where for everyone knows what a vampire is, but they don't call it a vampire. For some reason, they have a guide leading them to the cave, and the guide immediately unlocks the cage that the vampire's in. Yeah, you, you would think he would just keep the cage locked and be like, oh, yeah, this is, you don't want to fuck with this dude. He's, yeah. But he doesn't he doesn't actually say vampire until after opening the door. Yeah. I just couldn't believe how nonchalant they were about these vampires that they created. <laughs> I feel like the uh <laughs> That's a good point and I want to get back to that in a sec, but I feel like uh to Stair's point, I feel like this uh guy who was manning the cage saw these white people coming and was like, "Nah, fuck this shit." <laughs> and was just like, "I'm sticking the vampire on them." <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, the one scientist is Desmond from Lost, who, uh, he's not the one who gets bitten. His friend gets bitten. And, uh, they take him to a hospital, I guess. And he's like, there. Also, we got, we got to talk about the stormtrooper aiming. Like, from 10 feet away, they're missing all their shots. So the guy. Desmond has to throw a rock at the vampire to defeat it. Yeah, the, the only uh, vampire's true weakness, of course, you know, garlic, crosses, rocks, sunlight. Uh, so, yeah, he's in the hospital with his friend, and his friend, like, comes out, and he's like, I thought you were dead, man, because he, he doesn't know how vampires work. I don't know. <laughs> like, this is ostensibly a... These, well, are not, these are not vampires. They're not vampires, this okay? Is, the They're guy not. called him a vampire to his face, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, man, I can't believe how you still alive, man. What's going on? He must be perfectly fine. And then we cut back, and it's the little girl, and she's uh, expositing all of this garbage to us because, I don't know, she knows this for some reason. Uh, and we get, yeah, and then we get the, the like, the uh, title of the television show comes up, and... Now we're now we're rolling. Doesn't she have some line of like, uh, oh yes, she has some line that says, "This is how the world ends" or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, what a great way to start your show off! Like, oh, okay, that's where this is going. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Uh, so we get up to the government uh, people. They're all bad. They're all pieces of shit. <laughs> they gave a lady AIDS just to see what would happen. Yeah, like. These are unethical scientists. <laughs> like, and even before they suggest stealing a child, they're unethical ch- scientists. <laughs> like, yeah, we're just gonna get some death row convicts and just infect them with stuff. Why not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's just turn all these violent killers into immortal vampires. Uh, and we're introduced to uh, special agent, good guy, and uh, <laughs> his, and his teammate, who is like not good. Um, special agent, not my special friend. agent. Good special. guy is played by Mark Paul Gossler, who, uh, if you don't know who that is, he is Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. Special agent Daddy. Yeah, yeah. Special <laughs> agent Daddy is here, um, and he uh, he like gets this guy to uh, this death row inmate to sign up for this deal, and uh, not much happens with that that guy in this episode, really. He shows up, like, one more time, I think, and gets, like, a weird premonition. And that's it. Yeah. But uh, he, we, inter- we get introduced to him, and uh, he has a very strong bond with the government overseer. Like, the, se- the head of security For or some something. Reason. And they're like, yeah, man, we're brothers. We used to work. We used to, like, we were in the war together, man. This is going to come into play later on in a very dramatic moment, I'm sure. <laughs> Pretty much. Um... And yeah, so then they they come up with the scientists discover that like the key to uh, finding this cure for all diseases is that they have to uh, infect someone younger because each time it works more and more, and there's less deterioration. AKA they start looking less and less like Nosferatu. Okay, but this is the government. So are you sure that guy wasn't just a pedophile? Who the the security guy? The scientist guy. Oh. He's like, and the oh, yeah, the, I did I did the science on it. Yeah, and... we need to collect more children. <laughs> yeah, 
Because they have more, uh, they have more neurons. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. <laughs> Children noted for having bigger brains than adults. Yeah, uh, it's it's the science checks out on this one. <laughs> the science apparently does check out because this lady is like, yeah, I confirmed it. <laughs> I did. Like, like what? She's like, yeah, I, I looked it up on go- on. on <laughs> I looked it up on WebMD. <laughs> it's true. I like. Lo- like how could she possibly have confirmed it? They showed no. They showed no way that she could have. She confirmed just says it. she confirmed it, and he's like, "Well, I guess we got to steal a child." And then the security guy's like, "You want a child? I'll get you a child by four a.m." But we, but it has to be six states away from us. Yeah, because they don't want anybody finding out. There's no children in Colorado. That would be. There's no children in Colorado. No, no, no children who are you know on social services. <laughs> And cue to the probably worst written child character I've ever seen in a show ever. Uh, That's a it's bold, bold, it's a bold statement. statement, but it's not f- super far off from the truth. She's pretty badly written. Uh, so she's uh, hanging out, arm wrestling some kids. Uh, she she is the strongest her mom child. Dies. She uh, her mom immediately dies. She goes to uh, I guess pick her mom up from work. What the fuck is she doing? <laughs> she's hanging out at the gas station with her mom but apparently she'd smoked too much crack on her break and died yeah she had a crack overdose uh that's not even a joke they ha- they say she overdosed and then later the kid calls her mom her mom a crackhead and we had an argument about this is crack the funniest drug no <laughs> Don't crack it's not. not the funniest drug it's called crack. Yeah, and it destroys people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, this mom has a crack overdose, and uh, also might might I add that we only get like a it's three days between uh, her mom dying and her saying, "Oh, she was a crackhead." Yeah, she gets over <laughs> real quick. Um. So, yeah, this girl experiences the trauma of her mom dying. By the way, we never see her mom. She's already in a blanket by the time... She's already being, like, wrapped up and put in an ambulance by the time we see her. So we don't... The producer was the producer was concerned about having too many of those people on the cast. Yeah, how many black females can you possibly put in a show before people tune out, you know? They just simply weren't <laughs> enough applicants. So... I think they wanted us to forget about the mom so that we would forget how unbelievable this character is who <laughs> oh, just got over it. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, you know, you don't really... Yeah, I can't really complain about this mom character when there's so many rich, uh, enjoyable female <laughs> characters in this show. Like, uh, scientist lady. Wife. And ex-wife. <laughs> and ex-wife. And Nazi. Oh, and, <laughs> and Nazi vampire. And, and Nazi vampire lady. Who somehow is the most character developed of anyone. <laughs> She's got traits, she's horny, and she hates the blacks. <laughs> yeah, sign me up. Um, other than the Nazi part, it's great. <laughs> what? Uh, anyway, so uh, Q's special agent daddy and his partner, they get assigned to kidnap this lady, this girl. and um, Boy, they're good at it. Boy, aren't they great? They're the, they're the most incompetent people I've seen in quite so, a while. They go, uh, three days later, she's in foster care, and, uh... She's wrestling all the children. She's, she's just beating up all the children. She's a veritable broly. <laughs> no, she she's literally, like, fighting over this book because her mom gave it to her. Like, she cares, but she's not upset about her mom being dead. Yeah, I, no. Well, Kia, we just don't have time for that, okay? Why explore character and, like, personality when you have vampire stories? Yeah, like all the exciting vampire action when the vampires... Look at... Yeah, when vampires look at you through glass. And drink from a faucet of blood. (laughs) We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a sec. No. (laughs) Because that's fucking ridiculous. Um, So, yeah, uh... We get um, Special Agent Daddy and his partner, No Good. White guy. His partner, Bland White Boy. And... College Republic. He looks like a college Republican. Oh, this dude is for sure, like, the... He he was the head of his college Republicans club. (laughs) 
Um, so yeah, he, uh, it, he's got the male equivalent of a, can I speak to your manager face? <laughs> so they have a moment where, uh, they talk to this little girl and they're like, uh, yeah, you can come with us if you want. So she goes and packs and special agent daddy looks out the window, sees her escape and is just like, huh, <laughs> wonder what that's all about. I think it's because he's conflicted. Yeah, they don't really play that up yet, though. Um, they play that up two seconds later. Uh, and she figured out that they were coming, like they were not good because they didn't follow any of the protocol for claiming a child. <laughs> yeah, she points out that it's weird that they sent two guys <laughs> as social workers. And no social to worker. <laughs> so, yeah. To this traumatized youth. She runs away and they follow after her and uh, the... The neo-Nazi guy. Uh... <laughs> okay, but here's the other thing. So she said her mom died three days ago, right? Yeah, and that looked like... It how is she so familiar inner... with how the how it works, though? <laughs> also, it looks like that happened in, like, the inner city, but now we're, like, in the deep south or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm not supposed... I'm not <laughs> sure if her mom is supposed to have died super recently or not. They don't say anything time-wise, do they? She said she died three days ago That's... at some point. Oh, oh no! For real? <laughs> I I don't I mean the the show obviously didn't make it clear how much time passed, but the only time we were ever given was three days. I don't think the writers know much about how time works. And Orphan- if this Orphan- and if this girl this girl is if this girl is ten years old. Like I don't know if if some time passed there. Would, well, I don't even think a some... child would be like talking three days after their mom died of a crack overdose in front of them. Well, not in front of them. And and just saying, just saying like, damn crackhead. <laughs> She didn't die in front of her, to be fair. She just found her body afterwards, which is arguably more horrifying. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so Special Agent Good Guy sees uh, Special Agent uh, I Voted Trump uh, push the child around, so then he beats up Special Agent Sli- uh, Special Agent Conservative Boy. He literally slaps the child and a bunch of people are just watching. Yeah, there's like a bunch of people who are like, what are you doing with that kid? Hey! <laughs> Get back here! And then for some reason, that like they keep talking about her, like right next to the car where she can clearly hear yeah. them. Um, there's a moment where, after like uh, a bit of like bonding, where the guy tries to like make good with the kid, where Special Agent Daddy is like trying to, you know, fill the role, uh, fill that paternal <laughs> void in her life. Uh, he lets her sit in the front of the kidnapping mobile. <laughs> Special Agent Pence was right. Uh, <laughs> comes out and is like, what are you doing, man? She's cargo. <laughs> right yeah. next to her. Yeah, what? why aren't they stuffing her in the trunk? I mean, probably because they don't want to get that's... stopped by the police. I think that's how professional kidnappers well, do it. Well, these people are clearly, like, shitty at everything. <laughs> but one of them is, like, a military guy who's yeah. this bad at it. But, uh, so this is the second scene we get with, uh... Agent Daddy and his brother, the security guy, which is him calling to be like, what's going on here? And his friend, instead of just being like, listen, man, we're trying to cure this disease. It's just like, don't question me ever again. <laughs> That's a great way of leadership. He just immediately, don't tell your, uh, this, this brotherly bond don't... immediately changes on a dime. Yeah, don't explain. And he does not listen to, to logical arguments like, okay, first of all, this whole thing went real bad. We should probably get a new target. Nope. Keep it. Or, you know, we need... drive to the airport and get him on a private jet instead of driving 600 miles. Yeah, you're miles. a government facility. Come on. <laughs> Let's get a helicopter. But no, instead he's just like, how dare, don't ever question me again. How dare you talk to me like that? Yeah, that's great leadership. Not explain to your subordinates what the overall goal is or anything. So then we get back to uh, the lab and all of these vampires, and we get some Fleetwood Mac playing on the radio because sure. You see the you see the chain signifies the loss of humanity. <laughs> no doubt not. Yeah, and we get all the info dumps, and that's where we get to see the blood faucet. They feed the vampires via a blood faucet. <laughs> And they don't explain where the blood comes from. Yeah, what what type of blood it is? Yeah, it's just blood. Like, are don't they worry st- about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they need blood. We just gave them some blood. 
<laughs> what do you mean? What kind of blood? It's just blood. You know, it's the red stuff. It's the goo. It's the red goo comes out of you. Well, stop asking. Don't don't ask me any questions about this blood. <laughs> I just want to know how this went down, like, when they were setting up this system for feeding them. Like, like, maybe they're butchering cows, but maybe they're giving, they're killing homeless people. We'll never know, because they don't explain it any further. They're just like, faucets <laughs> for blood, there you go. <laughs> this is probably they, the they, just say, they just say feeding time, and they turn on the faucet, and <laughs> the blood comes part, out they of slowly it. slowly walk up, and they shove their face in there like a dog. Yeah, they start lapping it up like they're dogs. Um... <laughs> And then, and then, so, so, so the Nazi lady drinks the blood and then just goes back and stares at the guy again, but blood just running yeah, down her face. Yeah, this show has and, a lot of cool vampires and humans staring at each other through some glass. <laughs> it's like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. People staring at each um, other. And nothing happening. So then later, uh, security agent guy is uh, having sexy times with scientist lady. And uh, he gets a sexy vampire dream. <laughs> Except it's kind of not sexy. It's, well, it's more of a sexy nightmare. It's a sexy vampire nightmare. <laughs> a Nazi vampire lady shows Uh-oh. up and she's like, I've been thinking about you. Don't you want me? Yeah, she says, don't you want me, baby? <laughs> Soon I'll be coming for you. Save the date. And then she bites him vampire yeah, style. he wakes up and he's like, oh, oh man, what, what a <gasps> freaking time. Whoa! So yeah, they're saying. I wonder if this is some kind of premonition. <laughs> they're saying. Yeah, also, yeah. One of the, one of the guys says that everyone on the staff is getting vampire-related nightmares. It reminds me a bit of the uh, vampires are talking. What was that to show them? we watched? That sci-fi show. Uh, the yeah, one? well, the one with the Chad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Night it flyers? reminds Night me a little flyers. bit of that, where they seem to be suggesting that like the vampires have like some weird sort of ability to like mess with your mind, which I guess. And nobody's, nobody's giving it due diligence. Yeah. They're just like, mm, every, it's happening to everyone without exception. Probably. Yeah, they tell Desmond from. It's just cabin they fever. Tell the, they tell Desmond this, and Desmond's like, huh, well, it's probably nothing. We should keep working. He says it's cabin <laughs> fever, even though they're like in a mansion in the middle of nowhere, yeah. wall hotel. They could just have the people. I'm pretty sure those people are getting like sunlight. And we do, uh, this is the other scene where that death row inmate shows back up, and the, uh, the first... Doctor? The first vampire shows up into him as a premonition, is like, you're gonna be a good buddy of mine, pal, we're gonna be friends. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be really bad, though. Really, really bad. And I'll be here all the way. Which was a... Which, like, out of context is vaguely threatening. I think if, you know, it wasn't for the past 30 minutes, I would give that a higher score. Yeah. So, we go back, uh, and it's carnival time! <laughs> they just stopped this kidnapping to go to the carnival. Yeah. Because Agent Daddy feels A guilty. bunch of people saw you kidnap a child, but hey, let's stop at the carnival. <laughs> it's not like national news or anything. Yeah. Well, it is. It, Which is also like kind of realistic. No, it is very, it is very realistic. Of a it's very girl. realistic because it's a black girl. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't make anything. You know, the media. It wouldn't would make lose. anything past state news. Except it does. Yeah, which is like, oh yeah, so it's very unrealistic, is what I meant. I guess it helps that it's like two white dudes beating up a kid with multiple witnesses. I guess. In broad daylight. Even then, it's a black girl who is, like, in foster care, so it's, like, double not care for most of the news media. Uh, maybe there's a viral video. <laughs> so. Unbelievable! Daylight kidnapping! So we get them at the <laughs> carnival, and uh, he that's just when he has that confrontation with uh, Special Agent uh, Mueller Investigation is a false flag. Uh, Special Agent M- Stephen <laughs> Yeah. He looks like him, sort of. I mean, yeah. he's white, so he counts. Um, Special Agent Q. <laughs> oh, no! So, yeah, Special Agent I frequent QAnon. Um, I don't think I don't think anyone under the age of 60 frequents his QAnon. No, he definitely does. Hmm. I frequent, uh, what's that Reddit with the Donald Trump, with all of the Donald Trump stuff? The Donald. <laughs> yeah, he's the founder. 
Uh, anyway. Yeah, this guy definitely posts on Reddit, that's for sure. Yeah, so, uh, we get this, uh, scene where the little girl's like, I want that unicorn, and he's like, all right. And he teaches her how to shoot a gun, I guess, which, I don't know, maybe that'll come become relevant at some point. It's father-daughter bonding. So, um, she shoots down two in a row, and his reaction is to go, holy damn it! Well, you see, that's positive reinforcements, Watson. You gotta. I just love that as a as an ex as an expletive. Holy damn it! Well, I think he was. He's trying real hard not to say not to shit. swear in front of he the child. He can't say shit yeah. on that on uh, network television. So that was probably the most genuine moment in the whole show. Shocking him saying, "Holy damn it!" <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a big like happy. I could imagine somebody like trying not to do a hard swear and saying "damn it" instead. So we get some teases throughout that he has an ex-wife, and this is when we finally get introduced to this well-drawn and nuanced character who shows up and says, "I'm worried about you. Why don't you come home?" No, just what we needed—some romance drama. I have man stuff to do. Uh, and she's uh, she reveals that they have a dead daughter, which. Even hey, which it's not your fault. Which, yeah, which like what? Did, what? Why would it be? What did he do? <laughs> like, did he actually? <laughs> he tried to teach her how to shoot. <laughs> we don't get any information on how she on how his daughter died. So like, I guess we don't know if it was his fault or not. Uh, Can you imagine though if it was because he tried to shoot, use her how to she teach her how to use a gun you know, and she just <laughs> she gave her an Uzi <laughs> like that one kid in Las Vegas. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> oh, before this, I just want to mention there is a scene right before the carnival where they're driving. And the kid has access to... The kid is given Agent Daddy's cell phone. Oh, yeah, and doesn't... And she makes, does not contact <laughs> help. And doesn't do anything. Because she's... Yeah. I get, they probably never... She just... She, she just, like, gives up on the whole concept of getting away and just accepts it. This is fun. It's an adventure. <laughs> Look, Keo, is this any worse than... Foster care. <laughs> For all she knows, no. these are some Jeffrey Epstein guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, we get a cover of Take It to the Limit by the Eagles uh, that's playing over this scene of him going into the bathroom and knocking out Agent I post on Reddit. Oh yeah, <laughs> right after that, there was a... Right before... He had to be assured by Agent Daddy that things were going to be okay. And for some reason, he took him at his Yeah, party. like, he, I was, like, they should have had, like, a bathroom fight. Why did he, like, why did, what's the carnival, not the final straw for that yeah. guy? Also, why that dude was definitely that? peeing when he knocked him out, so there's just piss all over the place. <laughs> do you think that, do you think Agent Daddy got pissed yeah, on? Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> Anyway, I think that song choice was appropriate oh, no. because this show was really taking it to the limit of my patience. <laughs> yeah. This show, at this point, feels like uh, when we come back from him knocking out Agent uh, I Know Donald Trump, and I, personally, uh, <laughs> when he, after he knocks him out, he doesn't show up anymore, so that's fine to end on that gag on that one. He's probably dead. He's probably dead. Uh, it feels like they missed the second act. It feels like there's a first act and then a third act, no second act. <laughs> what would the second act entail? Presumably character <laughs> development. <laughs> I think it would entail like the girl not being freaked out anymore. Yeah, presumably like that's what and, I, that's what I mean cuz yes, the second act is typically right. the part where after you've done all the setup, you can build towards the climax. This just jumps right into the climax without any of like the setup. Or with all of the setup, yeah. but none of like the emotional part. At this point, all my notes I take were like half just "this is stupid." Well, yeah, because his plan is is fucking <laughs> dumb. It's the dumbest fucking plan. Yeah. What even is it? Uh, he goes to the sheriff's department of the small town for what? And asks to and turns himself in for kidnapping, but also wants to see a report. Well, you're right. That's what I mean. Like, so he uh, it cuts to there's like a thing. Yeah, he calls his ex-wife again, and she's like, they're doing like a big, a big thing where she's like, yeah, he's at, he, they're like doing secret language where he's like, she's, he's at the house, he's asking about you. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, no. he's, he like, they sort of like reconcile. 
there's only two scenes with this ex-wife, and the scene before that was them, like, establishing that they cannot reconcile. And then they reconcile? He had a very, very, very rapid character development. So then he gets, like, his uh, proxy daughter a... uh, (laughs) A popsicle. His stolen dog. A, pop, a popsicle sees a police officer and is like, "All right, well, I gotta turn myself in. It's the only way." Like, to be fair, he they probably couldn't make it to the border, or whatever he was planning before. It doesn't that. seem like he had a plan, <laughs> ever. He t- he knocks out he knocks out this other secret agent guy, and then he's just like, "I guess I'll keep driving." <laughs> Okay, so why did he turn himself into a local police department and not, like, negotiate a surrender with the FBI? Who would be on Because he's an idiot! Point? <laughs> well, I know, okay, I know why. Because the writer was like, oh, we need a shootout at the end of this. Like a very boring shootout? The most shootout. boring-ass shootout I've ever seen in my goddamn life. <laughs> like, the blocking, the fight location. Every, everything about it is, like, shitty. It's chaotic and bad. Like, no, it's not chaotic. It's, like, methodical and step-by-step. That's the problem. Yeah. And, like... Ugh. Um, so he gets arrested. So, yeah, they're at the... And, uh, he's he's reassuring the, uh, proxy daughter, his stolen girl, his stolen girl, who, uh, says... Like, he's reassuring her, and she's not questioning why he did this at all. This should be a moment in this scene where she's like, why did we do this again? What's the point? Why are we here? You know, just like, what? It, like, what is this? Like, like what he succeeds in doing why? is getting the sheriff killed. The sheriff gets dead-ass murdered. Oh, yeah, that's... That's a real letdown. There's only, like, one police officer in this building. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to make this, like, a, a, like a good shootout, you'd have these people, like, getting gunned down. and Yeah, you'd have, like, you'd have like one guy being torn apart RoboCop style by a hail of bullets. Instead, like, nope. a bunch of guys drive up in SUVs and surround the building, so Agent Daddy takes them at gunpoint. Yeah. And tries to run out the back, and one guy comes in through the back and shoots at him and kills the sheriff so then he he takes out all these other guys in very boring and like very boring action sequences and whatnot like it's just a hallway and a and an office to the right of it that's the entire geography of this fight yeah it's uh i'm glad they established that he was a good marksman in the previous carnival scene though (laughs) yeah well otherwise this would be unbelievable kioran all he does is shoot them with a hand. Unlike his friend, who is also presumably a good marksman, but can't hit him other than in the shoulder. So, uh, yeah, him. Also, there's a hand to hand combat scene, which is so very boring. It's also well. weirdly cut. Also, he's doing these weird stances. Yeah, like it, he has these. Yeah, like the stance where he gets back next to the door. <laughs> yeah, he's got like. He's doing like karate chops. <laughs> Yeah, but no. he's doing K suit. He's doing a uh, KQC <laughs> karate quarters combat. Uh, uh, All right, so uh, we get to this, this the what this whole episode's been building towards, guys. This confrontation between two brothers or something, and the runtime like forty. Seconds. Yeah, so they're like, oh, we got to do this quick. Come on, come on, say those lines. <laughs> So the the uh, they have like a confrontation where he's like, "We're brothers, man." And he's like, "Nah, man, this is one step too far, bro. You can't do this. You can't escape." And then he shoots a uh, pipe. Fire! Oh yeah, the fire extinguisher. While the, other guy, while the other guy just shoots him. Yeah, and shoots him in the shoulder as he's fleeing, and uh, they drive away, and we get some. Hopefully, he didn't have to. Hopefully, he didn't have to use his arm for anything. Like driving. <laughs> uh and we get then we get some like terminator ass ending narration from this uh, girl where she's like it looks like the battle has just begun or whatever bullshit she says <laughs> and then the guy and then agent daddy's like put your seatbelt yeah. on because we're very good for a wild for ride 10 year old and uh that's uh, that's it that's the passage 
Did I mention that the special ops guys were just coming in one at a time, like the really like the worst martial arts movie? Of yeah, all time? they were. They each came in. They're like, "All right, Frank, you go in next." Yeah, Bill, Bill, it's your yeah. turn. Yeah, he took out Frank. <laughs> you think they would have like someone watching their back, like in case he got into close quarters combat? Yeah, like they wouldn't expect. Like it's like they didn't know that this guy was like trained. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so. Why is it called the passage again? <laughs> uh, an, it's a, there's a passage full of vampires. <laughs> well, no, it's a, not a passage. It's a dead end. There's an entrance, and then there's a bunch a of passage cages. leads to the vampires. Okay, passage leads maybe to the it's the pa- okay. maybe it's to represent the passage that leads to the blood faucet. Hmm. <laughs> uh, you mean a pipe? Yes. I, I actually get a blood faucet. Okay, so why don't they call the show The Pipe? <laughs> that would be even more confusing, what? I think. Okay, they should have just called the show Blood Faucet. And everyone would just assume it's because a bunch of people are going to get killed. They'd be super disappointed. Would... <laughs> but the episode one would get a lot of views. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Alright, so any final thoughts on the passage? Uh, At one point they say... You can have an ocean of time. We're talking about death row inmate. We're talking about becoming a vampire. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this just sucks. This is a bad show. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep watching. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) what a shock! Keo was into it. No, I wasn't. But it's just. I don't know. It's really bad and. Enticing kind of way, I guess. Uh, I was. I'm not enticed. Like, I'm probably gonna watch like one or two more episodes just. Were to you see baffled? What they do Were you baffled by this? It gets. Yes, I was baffled. I was mystified, as previously mentioned. Yeah. At first, I was afraid. I, don't I was sh- petrified. I don't think this show's flamboyant enough to be baffling. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. This is uh, like, this isn't like Tell Me a Story, which is like the most baffling. This is just like. This is just like a quiet, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's like a, why would you do that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is a tune-out for me. Yeah. It's a, tune, it's a tune-out for me as well, but I'm going to keep watching. Keep us posted, it. Kyorin, because I want to know if anything ridiculous happens. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I will let you know. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's a tune-out for the passage. And uh, that'll about do it for this week's episode of the show. Uh, we have a... Yeah, yeah, if you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, or otherwise, you can send them to us at the email address tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Keo Rain? Ooh, uh, tv at gmail.org. That's right. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Jesse Swanson. I'm on Twitter at Stairmaster2. I'm on Twitter at Real Keo Rain. Nice. You can also find the show on Twitter at TV Tuners, and you can use the hashtag TV mm-hmm. Tuners, and we'll give a glance at what you're saying. Or show me that dick dong. Or hashtag Blue Pill. No, don't use that last one. Um, and yeah, that's about it for this week. We're on uh, all the favorite podcatchers of your choice: iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher. All of the podcatchers that you could possibly imagine. We're there. Uh, give us a review, subscribe, all that nice stuff that helps us get noticed. We don't have a Patreon, but we do accept dollar bills mailed to us. Yeah, mail us some mail us some fat stacks. And uh Mail us six dollars each, so we can have six six six. Ooh. And uh yeah, that's that's it. That's that's the end of the podcast. It's time for me and Keo Rain. If you, if you can't tell, I'm getting warmed up for my eternal damnation yeah. here. Wow, it's getting hot in here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time oh. for me and Keo Rain to die. Bye forever. We're gotcha. dead. And we're gonna die now. Oh no, not me too. Uh. 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 See you uh. next week. Until then, bye. Keep watching. It's over. Wow, I'm dead. <laughs>